manage the fire. Because um, I was living on a boat at the time, um, out in, uh, well, near, near Cowley and near Uxbridge. Um, in those days, we didn't even have cell phones. Cell phones hadn't really been invented. Um, for some reason, I had no power on the boat, and my alarm clock completely failed on me. And so I tried to stay awake, and I stayed awake until 5 o'clock in the morning, and as a result of trying to stay awake, they went into a deep slumber, for which nobody could wake me. I woke up about 20% and I, I should have been at the airport 10 minutes before that. Fortunately, it wasn't too, too, too far from Heathrow. They held the plane and we got there, but the problem was I didn't grab quite enough clothes. So for the rest of the week, I had the girls to provide me with a pair of waiter's trousers and a waiter's jacket. Every night after that, people kept asking me to drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had uh, Nicola reminded me, and um, we all went skinny dipping in the pool. Well, I have no memory of that, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, if you ask me anything, I, I can be extraordinarily in this pool. Ask me, though.
jam my agent at the time. I said, I can't believe you went and knocked on the chief's door. <laughs> I could have all have gone horribly wrong for you. I did, did it, Jamie? You know? There you go. <laughs> Um, and, you know, I mean, I got to about 29, 30, and I, I decided I wanted to save the world. Um, I didn't really. Um, um, so I went off and did a zoology degree for four years. And then I came back and sat in a class in West Hampton. I, I assumed I'd probably become a wildlife presenter. I'd go work for BBC and present wildlife presenter. But I sat in a class in West Hampton and I wrote three films, two of which got me. One was a special on cancer in National Geographic. The other was the first film that Steve O'Reilly, really the Australian guy. Australian the deadliest place in the world. And that film, that first film was seen made me think. Um, <coughs> it was it was stupid. It, it could it was either genius or stupidity, right? I I I'm tempted to say stupidity. Um, but in those days when people made a documentary, they put a camera on a tripod and they you know they, they did all that. Whereas in American drama they started taking the camera off the tripod. We were filming snakes, there didn't seem to be any point having a camera on a tripod. You needed to get the camera right down to the snake. You needed to get Steve down to the snake. Um, you know, I now look back on that first film and it looks quite tame, because that's a technique that people have used as presenters ever since. But I was the first person to do it with, with, with presenters. Um, and now everybody runs around with their camera off the shoulder. But I got back from that first shoot, and my next producer at Granada said, we're up for a reshoot, this is absolutely incompetent. Have you never heard of a tripod? <laughs> and we got 14 million viewers for the first show on ITV. It was the most popular documentary ever shown in the UK. So, yeah, I mean, other stupidity or genius, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but somebody said, um, uh, you know, do you, do you do any acting anymore? And the answer to that is, no, I don't. But it's not by choice. I, I really miss my acting friends and I miss acting. But I am so busy making television programs, documentaries, and, and when you're on a roll, I get off it. And also I do spend a lot of time. I spend about four months of the year in really wild places. So uh, beginning of last year I was in the middle of the Southern Ocean on a sixty foot yacht for four months, filming sharks and tuna and stuff. And I've just come back from Sri Lanka filming these monkeys. Then I was uh, last year I made a, a special on Komodo dragons, the, the, the massive lizards. Um, and they literally are from something like that radiators for that fur. And I spent two and a half months on an island which didn't have any water. Um, I should tell you this, I suppose, but in, in order to get Commander Dragon in the right place to film it, um, or to get them to interact with each other at all, they basically do nothing. You have to become an expert at catching fish, and then letting it go rotten, sticking it in one of your film stars, right, putting it on the end of a rope and getting them to chase it. <laughs> 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 and, um, we were trying to, we, we knew this. <laughs> I mean, we hear these birds that lay eggs in this nest, right? And the kind of dragons eat these eggs, right? But to give them a bit of help, I put, them, I put a bit of sardine oil all over it, because they've got a really good sense of smell. So I couldn't get this motor dragon to go anywhere near this nest, so I put the camera in there, and I went off with my shoe full of rotten fish, <laughs> and um, came tearing through the forest, shouting to see from my camera, saying, Stephen, get ready for a the running dragon is following me, you know? And you're running pretty fast. I mean, they can run. You don't want to trip over. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I got there. He was my camera. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I, I used the F word. Stephen, where the F are you? <laughs> he got off to look at a couple of birds. <laughs> 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 oh, an effing dragon up the arm. <laughs>